so good evening everyone firstly i would like to thank everyone who have joined uh, this session and for sparing your time i hope you all are excited as much as we are uh, my name is sasik shetty i am the github campus expert microsoft student ambassador and i'm leading few global communities like hack club uh, i'm also the uh, president of koshef sem chapter and the technical head of soc Uh, I would like to introduce today's speaker, the Prakriti Rai, who is currently working as a data analyst at M Results. He was teaching uh, as a professor at Sahyadri College for past years. He is passionate about teaching coding since he was 18. He was also the uh, faculty advisor of SOAC before. Uh, yeah, uh, over to Fawaz. Ah, uh, okay, cool. Ah, uh, is my mic audible, everyone? That's fine. Yep. Okay, good. Uh, so, uh, my name is Fawaz, uh, and I'm a second year student at Sayadri, uh, and I am the uh, competitive programming lead of uh, Code Chef chapter, Sayadri for Sayadri. And uh, there's nothing much about me, uh, but yeah. So I'll be talking about uh, SOSC right now. Like I'll just talk about who is SOSC, what is SOSC, what we do, and yeah, that's uh, stuff like that. Before that, we'll watch this uh, video once. Okay. Oh shit! Uh, I forgot the stream. Wait, after playing the video, that is still uh, my bad. Uh, okay. Uh, can you guys see my screen? Is it fine? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. There you go. Uh, let me just restart this. Okay. Uh, that was our promo video. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to show like a uh, promo video. That's it. Uh, so bef- uh, yeah. So again, as I see now, because of this COVID nineteen scene that's going on, uh, many of you don't know who we are. Like the especially the first years. Like I mean, the second years probably know us, but then the first years, um, uh, they don't know us because we've never gotten a chance to. uh meet you guys personally uh come to you and uh, explain who we are we uh, so you probably don't know who uh who we are what's sosc okay uh so but then we've taken this chance to talk to you about what sosc is and what we do so i'm at this uh page here i'll put the link in the chat afterwards um uh, but for now yeah who is sosc okay so what are we so basically we are a bunch of really cool people who like anything related to coding or technology stuff and uh, we just like to spread the word of open source okay so open source what is open source uh, i won't go very deep but then it's like um, i wrote something i wrote a code and then i published it somewhere i don't publish it, i upload it somewhere so such that anyone in the world can access it that's open source okay i'm not going to go very deep it's, it doesn't have to be code related it could be electronic circuits and stuff like that but then uh, right now we are just uh, with code so we want to spread the word of open source of sharing this uh, whatever we do to anyone around the world who can access us, uh, access it like so that we i write some program anyone in the world should be like oh okay i want this uh, like they'll get it okay so that's that and uh, we want to spread out the word of open source and we want to help other people uh or newbies or whoever it is uh to get into the programming community and get them started teach them about stuff and stuff like that we'll just like you know give them training workshops and stuff like that so that's who we are we're like a really bunch of cool people who want to spread the word of open source and uh, help people get into the com- uh programming community yeah okay. so yeah uh and uh now the, the full form of sosc is say at the open source community by the way okay 
just mentioning. And uh, yeah, uh, we have many clubs and stuff like that inside the SOAC. Okay, so if you just click here, we have a coach of some chapter. This is the uh, this is the the chapter that you guys are a part of the member. You guys are part of this. Uh, so this like focuses on uh, competitive programming. We have many more clubs like oh, here. These are our leads. Uh, I'll put the link up so that you can see the details uh, like in cl clearly later. Uh, we have this developer student club. This is actually a club by Google. We have and we have many clubs for uh, girls like to encourage girls to code as well. We have Django girls, girls who code. We have uh, SOC women's community and women tech makers. We also have GitHub Campus Experts, Hack Club, Node School, Mozilla, Microsoft as well. Microsoft will learn uh, student repository. These people are the uh, leads or stuff like that for all of these companies. You can check the details later. I'll put the uh, link in the chat. Um, yeah, and uh, we like, as I said, we like to conduct events. We like to spread the word of open source. We also host uh, workshops. So now uh, we have had some workshops before, but uh, you guys have never, like, I guess the first years have never been able to be a part of any of them because we are introducing ourselves right now. But yeah, so like now in the future, if we do host anything, we will be sharing a WhatsApp link and stuff like that to the event page. The event page will be something like that. And there'll be a registration here. You can register, it'll take you to Google form. You can fill it and you can, there are many, uh, workshops that we have conducted. Uh, most of them are online at the moment, obviously, you know why. Uh, before we used to conduct offline uh, workshops as well. So yeah, uh, if there is anything, we'll put up link in your WhatsApp group and uh, we'll let you guys know about it. Uh, yeah, that's us. And if you want to meet any one of our team members, you can just head to team or here and hit up. This will take you to the GitHub links and probably you'll get their contacts from there. You can ask someone, you can get to know each other. We want to connect with all of you. Okay, We want to make a really cool community of people who want to learn together and stuff like that. So we would really you know, love to connect with you guys. And uh, yeah. Uh, so hit us up if you feel like talking to us about anything about you get stuck in the thing you want to do, just hit us up. Okay. Uh, we have a GitHub link, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and stuff like that. You can I just put the link in the group. And yeah, that's us. And that's it from me, I guess. I don't want to take too much time because uh, Prakat also has to take the class. Yeah. So okay, he put the link already. Uh, so yeah, over to you, uh Rachita. Okay, so Fawaz has told about SOAC. Now, uh, and as he told, under SOAC, we have a lot of clubs. But, they, but then we're missing competitive programming. We have clubs which cover almost all the domains of technology. But there is no club that focuses more on competitive programming. And uh, you guys uh, also have heard about CodeShift, right? CodeShift is actually a coding platform. But they want more of Indian students to uh, learn competitive programming. So they have started this initiatives of uh, college chapters through which they can uh, connect to a lot of uh, students. Because uh, just by one association called CoachF, you can't reach a lot of people. So they want to start college chapters uh, through which they can uh, reach out to people, uh, to students, basically. So uh, since we... Uh, at SOAC, we wanted to start something like competitive programming. We found this as a good op opportunity. And so we have started uh, a college chapter. It's a very open source community. So we focus more on uh, a competitive programming. And uh, because, it, you know, in uh, uh, national and international contests like ICPC, there are very less Indians who back the top ranks. So, so we want the number of Indian students to... Uh, take uh, these ranks so uh, this is a small you know initiative to something bigger coming uh, i guess i won't waste more time and uh, i guess we'll ask prakash sir to continue with his session so over to you yeah uh, hello everyone just uh, someone confirm am i clear with my audio uh, yes sir. yes sir yes sir. okay fine now uh, so very good evening uh, to all of you and uh, I could not find a time before so I'm connecting you to this late evening at 8. Hope everyone is comfortable with this time. Without wasting much time, uh, we'll start with the session. I have a few slides to begin with. Uh, let me share the slides and then we'll get going.
Okay, I even need someone to just confirm. Are my slides up and visible? No, yeah, sir. Ah, uh, now it's visible. Okay, fine. So the session is on problem solving. So why do we have to solve problems, and what do you mean by programming language? So I put up a small kind of theory part in it, which I'll be going through very fast. So this is the outline which we have for four weeks. So week one, I'll be concentrating on basics of programming, basic constructs of programming, and week two will go for control statements. Branching will concentrate on that, and in week three, we'll go for uh, another set of control statements that is looping and unconditional control structures. And week four will concentrate on solving certain scenarios involving data structures, and then a uh, few data structure concepts will get involved in that week four. So I've kept it at a very basic level. Uh, I feel that learning the basics and making it strong, and then taking it over is a very important step whenever you are towards learning programming language. So coming into programming, what do you mean by a program? As you know, the, it's a set of instructions. So what do you mean by instructions? It's collection of data and command. So you feed data and command, and someone has to do your job. So the language, it's like a medium of communication. As we know, any language, if you consider English, it's a medium of communication between human beings. Hindi, English, whatever language it may be, it is a medium of communication. So programming language is also a medium of communication between a human being. And a system, or it can also be between systems. So it's just a medium of communication. So what do you mean by data? It's raw fact and figures which you feed in. Information is a processed or organized data which you're getting it as a result or output of your instructions. And then coming into very important point, what's the need of programming? Uh, if you want to make your systems do a particular task for you, then how do you tell it? Or if you want any human beings to do something for you, you actually communicate with them. So this is what I want, I expect from you. So in the same way, if we want something our systems to be doing for us, we need to be communicating with it. So the medium of communication is through the programming language. So the need of programming language as it's put up, it's to perform a specific task by your system. You have to tell your system, look here, I want this job to be performed by you. So we cannot tell it in English. So we need to be having a suitable medium, which is understood by our system. That particular medium is your programming language. Okay, coming into how do you learn a programming language, most of the students, especially first year students, when they get in, they have a question like, how do we start learning a programming language? It doesn't look like English, it does not have a grammar. But I would like to say that it's similar to English. It's like, how do we learn English? As I've put up in this particular picture, how do we learn English? We'll see first, we start with the alphabets. I've been telling this to most of my students also. We start with alphabets. Collection of alphabets, we form words. How do we collect alphabets? It should have a meaning. Uh, for example, D-O-G, dog. Collection of alphabets in such a way that it's have a meaning. I cannot collect O-D-G and say that it is a dog. No, D-O-G, it should come in a sequence. So how do you collect characters also very important. So collection of alphabets forms your words. And afterwards, what do you have? Sentences. Collection of words forms sentences. And in English, you know that. For example, apple is a fruit. That's actually a sentence in English. And how do you know the sentence has ended in English? We use a full stop. And how do you know the sentence is continuating? We use a comma to tell that it's a multiple sentence, which is in a single block. And the collection of sentences actually forms a paragraph. Collection of paragraphs forms a story. And then collection of stories forms a novel series. So this is how we learn English from our childhood. We have seen this process of learning English. The same process I can take up for programming what we have alphabets in English, in programming, we have something called character set. What do you mean by character sets? We categorize into three categories. It can have alphabets, it can have numerics and special symbols. So alphabets A to Z and then uh, digits 0 to 9 and all other special symbols which you find in your keyboards, they together form the character set. Collection of these character set actually form some meaningful words or meaningful units in computer science, which we call it as tokens. For example, in English, if I tell fruit, it's a category of words, correct? If I tell apple, yo, you know it's a fruit. If I tell dog, you know it's an animal. So there are categories which are made on the words. In the same way, in programming language also, we categorize a token into different categories. So we have five main categories of tokens, identifiers, names given for your memory locations, usually the names used for storing something, you have uh, keywords, some preserved meanings, which have some preserved meaning. In English also, for example, if I tell Apple, you know what is it? 
I need not tell that apple is a fruit. Everyone knows what is an apple. It's having a predefined meaning for itself. It's having a reserved meaning for itself. In the same way, in programming languages also, we have few words or few tokens which have some reserved meaning. So we call them as keywords. Coming to the next part of tokens, we have uh, constants. Constants are some fixed values. For example, one is a constant. Seven point two is a constant. If I put hello in double quotes, it's a constant. So the values which don't change are actually called as constants. The next part of the tokens are operators. You know, arithmetic operators which you are familiar with: relational less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, logical and, logical not. So all these are various operators which you have actually come across. So that's another category of tokens. And the end category is special symbols. For example, semicolon, full stop. Asterisk, a carrot symbol, a dollar symbol, an ampersand, a percentage symbol. So all these actually make into another kind of token. So totally, we have five tokens in programming languages, five categories of tokens. Collection of these tokens actually form statements in programming language. In English, as I said, a sentence ends with a full stop. In a C language, if I stick, a statement ends with a semicolon. So what is a statement? For example, if I tell int a equal to nine, that's actually a statement in C. Which is having collection of tokens. So we'll see when I write a programming language, I'll show you how a particular statement is broken into tokens, and collection of these statements forms a particular function. And whenever we tell a programming language, there should be one function minimum for execution. And in C programming language also, the basic function which is required for execution is a main program, without which your program execution doesn't begin. So a program can have multiple functions within it, but one minimum function is required. So program is nothing but collection of functions. So like in English, we have story, which is collection of paragraphs. In the same way, in programming languages, we tell program which collection of functions. Coming into a software, a software can be collection of programs written of different programming languages, which work together to perform a real world task. So a journey of an engineering student actually starts with a program, learning programming in your first year, and then taking it forward towards the software, building up your own software in the final year. So, how good you learn different programming languages? How do you how good you make your system work with different programming languages and end up with a beautiful project in your final year? That's what should be a journey of an engineering student from first year to final year. In this course, you learn around numerous types of programming languages. It's like different languages, like Hindi, English, and all. Everyone is used for communicating. It's like a North Indian people is comfortable with Hindi. In the same way, in systems also, the system which interact with the web are comfortable with HTML, CSS, those kinds of coding. So it's a typical like how the system suits, how the languages suits a particular system. And nowadays we are coming up across programming languages which suits across all the domains. For example, if you take programming languages like Python, which is used in front end, which is used in back end, which is used in your database connections also, and it is also used in your network connection. So we are coming across languages which are universal across the domains, like Python. Okay, so we'll be choosing C programming language in this particular uh, course. Why? Because most of you are first year students, what I've heard, and then uh, second year students are starting your basic data structures. So let me quickly revise on the topics. And then if any questions you have on these topics, you can put it in the chat session. I'll take up at the end of the session. I'll try to solve those questions also. If uniquely you have any questions, I'm running forward through the slides because quickly we'll get into the coding part. Okay, week one course, I have taken up uh, like this. We'll see few tokens. How do we work around tokens? I have taken few questions and I'll be taking you around those problems which are usually encountered in your uh, campus drives. Uh, so we'll be taking in through those kinds of some few tricky questions also across this very basic level questions. Number system very important when you come across number system, especially when it is into networking, in it into security and all. Number system plays a very important role. So we need to clearly identify what is number system and how your computer actually identifies the number system. Different data types, storage types, how the computer stores the data, what amount of memory is given to you. And then interactions, obviously, I want to interact with the system. So how do I interact with the system? How do I ask him to show me something? Or how do I ask him to take him the in input? So these things comes under IO interactions. Type conversions, implicit and explicit. Type conversion is nothing but how do I convert my data from one type to another? Is it possible? Is it feasible to convert all types to any other type? 
or is there any restriction? So those kinds of questions we'll see in type conversion. Finally, we'll come up to the expressions where it's writing a statement, writing mathematical formulas to get your results. So this is what I've taken up for uh, week one. And then as I said, week two, it will be branching constructs. I'll take you through different branching constructs. If, if else, else if ladder, cascaded if, and then nested if, and switch. Week three, I have put up for for loops, while loops, do while, and then unconditional constructs like break, continue, and uh, go to. Week four, I'll be taking up data structures on arrays, and then uh, strings, and then string manipulations. It depends on the timeline, what we have. A very stringent timeline of eight hours we have to finish all these things. So let me go very fast. In case if it's not understood, please ping me back. I'll explain it once again. And in case if these concepts are little into a lower level, as I've taken it for first years, you will feel it's very easy. Let me increase my complexity in that level also. And then finally, we'll see certain scenarios and use cases, which I'll be trying to give weekly wise, where you can try to solve those use cases. Usually, I'll pick it from the campus drives, uh, and then uh, I'll try to give it here. So this goes, and then uh, anything you have to contact on any of the contents which I have done in the presentation, or any questions if you have, you can uh, reach out to me. Uh, these are my contact information. So, uh, however, I'll say I'll share the slide with the team, and then I think the team would be sharing these slides with you later. Okay, quickly moving on to the development side of. That was a quick presentation. I usually don't like presenting theory things, unlike it's a chalk and board, and then uh, quickly we'll move on to the coding stuff. Hope uh, the quick presentation was something to start, kickstart, and begin our coding. Uh, I just want one confirmation from someone. Is my ID visible? Uh, yeah, sir. OK, fine. Uh, if I'm going very fast, uh, someone have to slow me down. I usually am very fast, assuming that students are very smart. So I'll go very fast so that you'll pick up very fast. In case if I'm too fast, slow me down. And then uh, I'll tell you what is the platform I'm using. I'm using the platform from CodeChef itself, an ID online compiler, uh, C programming language. So what you see is if I open an ID, something like this comes up. Uh, if you can see there, uh, there is something called hash include stdio.h, which is a header, which we call, which is a head section, or we also call it as a link section. We have documentations which can be written. A good programming or a good programmer usually, for example, if I'm teaching something, I should be writing, what is that program for? So uh, it's a good habit of programming, actually. Uh, like, uh, what is this program written for? And uh, how, when is it written? What is the use case which is it solving? So these are the things which a programmer has to be writing in the documentation section. So as I said, one function is compulsory. That's your uh, main function. So if you see this integer, it's actually the written type. Whenever I tell a function and see, it's having certain things which you need to be knowing. Uh, the thing which comes here, it is a return type. Every function should have a return type. What is actually returning? And then what's the name of the function and any parameters it's taking. If it's taking any parameters, it should be included inside the parenthesis. If it's not taking any parameters, you can leave it blank or you can actually give it a void. Void specifies nothing, non-specific. And all functions, definitions begin with opening and closing pair of braces. Uh, let me be clear with the different kinds of uh, brackets, what you call generally. Uh, the curved ones, I usually call it as parenthesis in programming language, we call it. This, we call it as braces. Some of you would have also have a habit of calling it as flower braces. We have another set of brackets. We usually call it as brackets in computer line. And uh, most of you have a habit of calling it as rectangular brackets or square brackets. So because I'll be referring it as parenthesis, so you have to be very careful. This is what I refer it as parenthesis. The curved braces is what I refer it to as uh, parenthesis. OK. And then now, uh, what do you mean by a header file? So what this header file says is that uh, there are certain rules for writing a programming language. This particular programming language has to be understood by the system. So if I have to make it understood by the system, it should be in a binary language, because the system only understands in the language of zeros and ones. 
So I want someone to convert it to a binary language. So there we have a person called as compiler who converts this particular language, whatever we write it in C or Python or C++ or Java into a binary language. So when he's converting into a binary language, we need to tell him that we are following the rules. And where do we get these rules from? So these are the files from where we get the rules from stdio.h, which says that all the input output related operations have been following a rule which is present in this file. So it says standard input output header file. So stdio stands for standard input output header file. Uh, so we have many different kinds of header files which suits your applications. For example, if you're doing mathematical operations, you have hash include math.h. Uh, if you have uh, console operations, we have conio.h. If you have string operations, we have string.h or ctype.h. So many standard library files are available, which will help you out in converting your particular language, whatever you write it in your programming language, into a machine language in the form of zeros and once because writing it in a binary language is too difficult and too complex also so we want some intermediate person to convert whatever we write it in high level languages like c c plus plus java into a machine language that's where a compiler comes into an act and we need to tell the compiler we need uh, following certain rules and these rules are taken from these kinds of link files okay coming into the first part of it tokens I have few things already written. I can take quick questions before I uh, begin uh, proceeding. Any qu questions, if you have, I can uh, take that on quickly. I'll give a couple of minutes if you have any questions or else I'll get back. Uh, sir, questions are on the chat section. Okay, fine. I'll just go through that. Okay, one question what I see is uh, which is the preferred ID? So, preferred ID for uh, C programming language, or you are asking for preferred ID, which you can go for this particular course. I'll answer both of them. So, preferred ID for C programming language, or you can use many IDs, open source IDs like uh, Code Blocks. You have NetBeans, and if you are a beginner and want to understand tracing and all, you can go for Turbo C, the initial ID which was used for uh, programming, actually learning programming in C. Better ID is the Turbo C one, and then. Uh, for this online programming, which I'm taking up uh, now, you can go for uh, code. Uh, you have CodeChef and you have all other uh, online uh, platforms like CodeChef, and then you have uh, Solo Learn. Many platforms are there which you can take up for this particular thing. But uh, it's better always to work on uh, offline uh, ID rather than online ID because all the functions are not supported in online IDs. Okay, and then uh, difference between int main void and then uh, void uh, main. So int main int is just telling that you have to return something after my function is performed. And void main says that I don't want to return anything after my function is performed. So if I write int main, what is that has been returned and to whom it has been written? So that's a very important question when it comes to int main uh, void. So I'll get back to that question. Okay. So very good question, which has come up. What was the question is, so what's the difference between uh, int main and then uh, void main? See, if you write int main, it actually expects you to return something after the function is completed. So you can see a statement here, return zero. Okay, now another question arises, what is this zero and to whom you are actually giving zero? Okay, whenever main is returning something, it's actually returning it to your operating system. Operating system is very important system software in your computer, which is responsible for making connections with your CPU for execution of any job. And since you know that your C program 
begins your execution in main and ends your execution in main so the operating system always tracks the status through the main program so zero says successful execution so when you write void main what happens is you are not sending the status automatically when this ending flower braces is encountered of the main the operating system comes to know that your main has completed that means the whole program is complete so in all functions you find this we call this as return type so it's a very fair question of writing it as void no problem in your uh, static or offline ides you can also go for writing it as uh, void but most of your online compilers actually run through the server so this code chef everything is actually running through a server so what happens is they would have integrated your compiler to this online servers so those servers require some status input so this particular is actually a status there so this is a syntax automatically provided by your online id which says that oh, uh, oh yeah uh, yes screen is not visible i like share okay fine i'll just share once again yeah it's good you come I'll up with share. these things okay if something you want me with the screen to go on Okay. Uh, yeah, someone mentioned in the chat. I just thought we'll put it over. <laughs> Sorry. Oh yeah, fine. I was thinking that I can tell it overly. That's fine. Okay. Uh, so okay. this was the point which I was speaking about. Uh, if you can see here, int main void and then return zero. What is this return zero? Was the question. So the question is, this return zero is actually sending status back to your operating system. In this case, it's sending into your server ID integrated to this particular online platform of CodeChef. There is a server connected at the back end where your compiler is running. so we are telling that particular person my successful execution in main so to tell that we need to send certain codes so one of the code for successful execution is zero so if you write void main you are not writing any return statement there so your compiler comes to know at the end of this brace that it's an end of your main so your c program has to be ending so there is no difference between void main and int main except that int main explicitly you need to be sending a return statement wherever you have some return type written here in place of void it's your duty to get this return without return it will not go out of the function it will always request you to return something if you have written here any data type other than void so that would have solved the question okay taking you in further i'll quickly start with the uh, where i was in the token so let me write one simple statement int a equal to Nine. I've written just a simple statement in C. Uh, for now, most of you would be familiar with C. Int is actually a data type which says that whatever variable you are having next is actually of type integer, and please give him a specific size. When I tell what is the size of it, so here in modern 32-bit compilers and 64-bit uh, processing units, they actually give int as four bytes. So I hope everyone is clear with this term called uh, bytes. It's a storage term which we use and uh, one byte is equal to 8 bits bit is actually the smallest unit which can store one particular digit either 0 or 1 so collection of 8 bits forms one byte so integer usually takes two bytes when we are telling in learning c when we are learning in theoretical subjects right we usually tell that integer takes two bytes because when c was developed it was 16 bit processor so every theoretical uh, subjects which we teach in using uh, which we teach c programming language we tell that integer is 2 bytes but what happens is when you see in your labs and all you when you put what is the size of integer it tells 4 bytes so there is a question arising your textbook says 2 bytes and uh, your computer says 4 bytes where is the difference coming in it's only because of your processor 32 bit and 64 bit are the processors which we are recently using your operating system so if you go to your settings and uh, in your system if you see what is the processor type which you are using most of the recent ones are 64 bit processors but in your college uh, most of the systems are 32 bit processors so in there the size of integer is 4 bytes so what happens with this line is your operating system will search in your computer for 4 bytes of free space and that bytes it will reserve in the name of a so a is actually a name given to a storage space in your computer which is equal into 4 bytes and in that particular storage space i am storing a value called 9 and how do i store the value 9 in binary format and who is taking care of converting it to binary and storing it it's your compiler and your operating system together they perform the operations in such a way that it reserves 4 bytes and as a user i don't know where this 4 bytes are reserved 
in your memory and who is knowing it's all by your operating system so always remember in your computer science a very important software is your operating system so he is responsible for giving you the room space and he is responsible for giving you the cpu also and without cpu you cannot work so this is what this line is telling that i want a 4 bytes room space and please give the name as a and in that particular room store the variable 9 okay i was telling about tokens right so this integer is a keyword so you can see there are color codings used here so whatever is a keyword it comes in a special color coding in all the ids in all modern ids they support to differentiate between variables and the keywords through color coding so this particular thing is actually a keyword and c is case sensitive what do you mean by case sensitive is small i is not equal to caps i upper case and lower case alphabets are different in c programming language each have their own numbers so that's an interesting concept to come up with why it is different what happens is all these lines whatever you see in some alphabets like english have to be converted to zeros and ones so you know that how does a computer convert for example if a is there how to tell my computer that into binary language so what happens is directly i cannot convert it to binary language so what i do is i need to be first finding a unique number for it each of you have a usn number a unique number for yourself in the college right in one usn number there cannot be two students in one roll number the roll number means usn number i am speaking about it is very unique for example i can take aadhar number it's very unique in the same way in computer science also for each of the characters whatever you see in keyboard we have given a unique number so for example small a the unique number given to that is 97 why did we give a number because alphabet cannot be converted to binary so first we give it a unique number and this 97 i can convert it to sequence of ones then zeros and how do we convert it there is a logic i don't want to get in behind that you just have to divide 97 by 2 go on dividing it and collecting the remainder in the reverse when you go you will get the binary format very interesting logic and then very easy to do it by yourself you can google it out on how do you convert integers into binary form however i'll not take up this uh, this that in this particular session but you need to be knowing each characters whatever is there in your keyboard should have a unique number why i'm giving a unique number because a cannot be directly converted to binary but 97 can be converted to binary so this unique number you usually call it as ascii coding this we call it as ascii coding what do you mean by ascii coding american standard code for information what is the information a to be interchanged it is interchanged to a binary format don't think this is a binary form of a i am um, i have not bracketed the binary value for 97 i just gave you an example you can easily convert 97 to binary form don't think 101010 is a binary form of a no 97 you have to divide it uh, recursively into and you can get the binary form but you need to be knowing this concept so this is called ascii uh, what do you mean by ascii once again i'll get in each character in your keyboard one more example if i have to give one one is not one in computer science it's been given a unique number called 49 one in computer science is not one it is actually given an ascii code of 49 so this is how your ascii works any character you take in your keyboard it has its own unique number as a usn number each student has right as a aadhar number each Uh, indian has in the same way each character in your keyboard has a unique number and they don't repeat 97 is given for a 97 will not be given to anyone that's why 97's unique number is something else so each one is having its own unique number so that particular number coding we call it as ascii it's universal Ho throughout the whole world we follow that particular coding unique coding for these characters so what happens is this particular whole program has to be converted to binary so the everything has to be converted into a unique sequence of numbers and then into binary format so that thing is been taken care by your operating system and compiler so int is a keyword and what is a it's a name given by myself for that particular four bytes of room space i can give any name a1 a2 but there are some rules for giving names what are the rules the rule says that it should begin with an alphabet or a underscore 
but usually we don't give underscores because it's very complex to track when you're coding it but we give some interesting names don't give names like a b c d and all it's very bad habit what we need to give is if it's an integer number in company we usually follow like this int num1 so what's the meaning of it now don't think int is a keyword now int is not a keyword because it does not just come as int it's a collection of int num1 so someone who looks into this will come to know that okay there is a number whose type is integer and in that i am storing the value 9 so this is how in companies we usually follow we call this standard as uh, pascal casing or camel casing what do you mean by that is the second word first letter of a word is in small case the second word first alphabet is in capital case for example if i have to write first name i should be writing it like this f i r s t n a m e so it should begin with small case but the second word first letter should be in capital case so this is a casing standard why i'm telling all these things are it's very important when you come to your placements or campus drives you know about casing each company has its own casing pascal casing camel casing so different kinds of casing we call and we use so this is what is casing how do you actually give your variable names the general rule says that it should begin with an alphabet or an underscore then you can have numbers with it but it cannot have special symbols you can also you cannot write first space name usually you have a, you have a habit right for example prakhyat ray how do i write it prakhyat space ray but i should not be writing like that in computer science space is not allowed for variable names or space is not allowed for values also that's what quickly is into your tokens and then you equal is a special operator which is used which is called as an assignment operator what it does whatever is there towards your right hand side is being given to your left hand side so that's what is assignment operator and semicolon is a special symbol which says that this is end of my line whatever conversion of binary you need to do you need to do till here you may ask me a questions in whatever what you have written here in backslash what is this this is called as a comment line which is ignored by your compiler so comments are usually written for you to understand the piece of code and it's a very good habiting standards of a coder to write comments fine so this is how it goes we can write two types of comments line comments and block comments what do you mean by block comments is if you have multiple lines to be commented i can write hi and then uh, if i want to go to second line i can go it i can write hello it takes everything as comments you can see here everything is actually removed from the color coding so when this comment ends when i write a star and another hash so you can see here this particular thing is called block comment whatever you write between this forward slash and star and this star and a forward slash whatever is in between this everything is taken as a comment comment means ignored by the compiler and why do we write comments for documentation so that a next person who sees my program should understand what is a program so usually we write what is the name of the program who has written the program when was the program written so all these things in companies we follow whenever we go for documentation okay so this was regarding your uh, basics of what do you mean by ascii what do you mean by numbers and all those things now we'll go to data types so as i said there are different memory location uh, sizes given for each of the data type for example if i want a single characters to be stored i'll write a equal to i'll write some p so i've written here now i want to know what's the size of this particular character a how much size is given in my memory as i said for integer it is 4 bytes what's the size for v small v you can see here i have given it in single quotes so whenever i write it in single quotes the meaning of this is it's a character constant it should be converted to its ascii value and it has been given one byte space been given one byte so there are different data types and there are different sizes given for each of the data types so how do we chuck that we'll quickly write a few syntaxes for chucking that for example i'll write printf right percentage t i'll come to what is this printf to those who are new to programming languages okay let me write a so there is a special operator called as size of what it does is it tells what is the size given to this particular a 
so for our understanding we'll write down a statement also size of a is so printf as i said to be communicating with the computer so if we want the computer to display something through a three language we use a statement called printf print to the console and if i want my computer to take some input from me read some input from me i use another statement called scanf so there are different ways of interacting with the computer i'll get back to that in the upcoming uh, uh, sessions but uh, first we'll see this basic thing what's the size given to this particular a so in the ide i can have a run i'm not giving any input so those who are new to code chef whenever you are coding here if you are having any inputs first giving the input section but my program does not have any input to be read from the keyboard or console i'm giving static inputs in both a and in each num1 so running the code okay so you can see here size of a is 1 1 byte as i said character takes 1 byte now we'll see what is the size of int num1 so we'll see what the size of int num1 instead of a i'll just change it to int num1 as i said it's a 32 bit processor minimum what is it running in the server now is or 64 bit all of them take 4 bytes for integer you can see your size of int num1 is 4 so each data type has its own size so coming into different kinds of data types whatever we have in c the basic data types what we have in c is character integer float double and then another basic one is void so void is non specific non specific means it's not been given any memory location so we usually call it as non specific and then now uh, integer as i said it takes integer numbers it takes positive integers negative integers it also takes integers octals hexadecimal character is for single character float is for real numbers float and double are for real numbers what do you mean by real numbers in normal mathematical we call them as decimal numbers 3.2 4.6 those kinds of numbers are called real numbers which we represent or which we store using float or double so we'll quickly see what are the size associated with all of them so let me quickly write down the statements so one was on a we saw what is the size same line i'll execute for others also directly i'll give some integer here so i'll give 7 7 is an integer go for 7.9 it's a floating point number okay so when i run this particular code you can see the size associated with different thing first one is size of integer num1 that is because of this particular line next i have given size of a so size of a is 1 byte the second line says size of 7 size of 7 is 4 why 4 because 7 is an integer next 7.8 is a floating type so its size is this one 8 but floating type is 4 bytes why it has taken 8 is all the real numbers by default it takes it as double so if i want to see what is the size of float let me give directly float not double printf instead of float let me give you can also chuck in this fashion also instead of giving 7 i can give integer and instead of giving uh, a i can also give character so that i can come to know in my computer what is the size given for each of them so when i run this i don't want this particular printf so let me comment it so you can see here clearly size of character 
first one is character that is one byte size of integer is four bytes size of float is also four bytes size of double is eight bytes so this is what is your data structures now a question arises four bytes is it enough to store all the numbers is four bytes enough to store all the big numbers what i have a very big integer number how do i store it in that case i need to be telling my compiler please give me some extra space so how do i tell my computer please give me some extra space there is another keyword called long so if i write long int earlier if you see the output integer was having four bytes now i have given long int and i'll run the code you can see eight coming so you can see here eight the size has been doubled in 32 bit processor what happens is the long is telling my computer or my compiler look i don't want a four byte room space i want extra room a very big room for my particular data so give me an extra size so that's why we use long in the same way we also have long for this also long double also which goes to 16 another question arises is okay you told four bytes is required for integer what if my integer is very small why do i want to waste four bytes in that case what i can go is i can go for telling my computer don't waste by giving me four bytes give me around less number of room space so i'll write another keyword which is called as short so i'll run the code you can see here as soon as i write short it gives me two bytes just integer it gave me four bytes for short int it is giving me two bytes for long int it is giving me eight bytes so there is also a provision where you can ask your computer to give you more memory space so that you can store a large amount of data in there so these are different things which you have to be very careful there was very interesting interview question asked once and a very good company also the question was i write a program to store your age write a program to store your age i'm just sharing this particular example uh, program to store your age and uh, display the age so what happened as soon as we tell age age will not be a negative number after all so age should be an integer number so we usually go for declaring it as int age everyone in uh, the particular panel went for writing int age and they wrote uh, a reading statement scan if enter your age and then everything they wrote and then uh, the number was displayed but only few of them were selected why because if you see a human age it starts with zero and maximum you can go till 100 so for storing a number from zero to 100 which is very small number do you require four bytes of room i don't require four bytes of room it is wastage of your computer memory so only those students who used this particular concept of short int were selected in because those students actually know the significance if they write short int they are requesting the computer to not waste the space by giving four bytes. Give us a space of only two bytes. So that's how you need to be very smart when you're answering your campus questions. Questions are very easy. Questions will be very, very easy sometimes. But how much do you understand the questions? How much do you know the inside concept of memory? And how much you know the processing things of your computer? That matters the most. So since the question was for age and any human age cannot, okay, you may tell there are some people who will live for 125 years. That's okay. I can consider it an ideal case, not seen nowadays, but it's okay. But if you take 125 also, it can be stored in two bytes. It can be just enough to store in two bytes. Fine. So then why do we want four bytes? Why can't we reduce it to two bytes? And after all, how much can we store in two bytes? You can store a number 32,767. You can store a big number like 32,767 in two bytes. Then why do you want to go for four bytes? That was the question which they had actually posted. And this was the answer for it. How do you reduce your memory size? So this was regarding your uh, data structures, which I had to tell basic data types, which we see in the data structures it's not advanced data structures just a basic one which i have shown you what is character what is float what is double what is int and what is long and short size specifiers so short and long we call it as a size specifiers fine okay uh, moving on quickly to the next concept uh, i'll erase uh, all these things we don't want this for the next one i'll do it in the same okay coming into type conversions for example uh, consider i have two variables int a 
for whom I have given a value as seven. And uh, let me write another variable in different line, a b, for which I have given a value as two. Okay, I want to divide them and get the answer. Fine. So, what is the answer possible? For example, I want to get the answer seven by two, three point five. So, how do I write? So, first, I'll be writing just stuck here percentage d. What happens if I give a divided by b? So I just wrote percentage D and coming into this printf basic thing, which I'll tell, what do you mean by percentage D is I'm telling my computer, whatever I'm printing is an integer. And how does the computer know it is an integer? This D is a code used for integer. So D is a code used for integer in the same way for character. Different data types I said in C for character, we use C a float we use f and for double we use lf long symbol we use long integer also we use ld short integer we use ht for short size specifier we prefix with h for long size specifier we prefix with l so these are different codes used by your computer and who is giving this codes and where are these codes stored these codes are stored in this header file stdio.h Integer means D, character means C, float means F. If you're using a size like short, then it is H. So if I'm writing short integer, I should write HD. If I'm writing long integer, I should be writing LD. If I'm writing float, I should be writing F. So now if you see the answer, seven by two, it's not an integer, it should be a float. But we'll see what will happen if I give percentage D and A by B. When I run this code, You can see the answer three. Why? Because both of my operands, what we call is integers. And I'm telling that my answer also, I want it in integer. So what it did, it did seven by two, 3.5. But since you wanted the answer in integer, it will cut the decimal part and it gave you the answer as only three. Then how do you get the answer? Is it fine if I write percentage F? You will see after writing percentage F also, what is the answer? See the answer? A wrong value I'm getting. Why is it? What is happening here? Why I'm getting a wrong answer? The reason is both of the variables are actually integers and you are trying to do an floating point operations on it. So what you need to be doing is simple example. I'll take, I'll take float D take a by B. Let's go for now giving D. What is the type of D? It is a float. So it should be quite good enough to print the answer. That's what we feel, but it is not the case. We'll see the answer. You can see 3.000, wrong answer. It should be 3.5. Why is it giving 3.000? I have used float also. Clear? There comes a concept of type conversion. What do you mean by type conversion is when I'm doing any operation on a computer, it sees what are the types of A and B. What is the type of A and B? It is integer. So what it does is it keeps the answer also in integer. So A by B answer is 3.5, but since both of them are integers, it keeps the answer in integer. So answer is three, but when it is giving the answer to D, it comes to know that it is a float. So it automatically adds 3.0000. So first it cuts that 0.5. So how do I bring that 0.5 back? So I should be telling, explicitly to my computer, look, A and B are integers, but I want the operations to be done using floating type. So first convert A to float and then do the operations. What happens by this is we call this as type conversion in C. All this is type conversion in C. So what I'm doing explicitly, I'm converting it to floating type. And there is a rule in C programming language. If any one of them is of higher type, then automatically the whole operations will be performed in higher type. So now if I run the program, you'll get the correct answer. 3.5000. See, 3.5000. So do I have to write the float in the A part only? No, not necessary. I can write that float in the denominator also. Any one of them have to be in the floating type. 
then the whole operations can be converted to a floating type and done. So this particular concept is called as type conversion, type conversion in C. So whenever there is a particular variable with higher type, automatically the whole operation tends to be coming in higher type. If both are of lower types, then the computer goes for keeping the output also in the lower type, which we call it as truncating, means cutting the part of the output. So 3.5 was my actual output. It cuts that 0.5 because it was an integers. But in this case, what happens? I'm telling my computer, don't take it as an integer and do the operation. Take it as a floating point number and do the operation. So what happens when it takes it as a floating point number? B is taken as a floating point number. So automatically, my computer performs the operations in floating level only. So this is what is type conversions in C. Uh, any questions as of now, I can uh, take up quickly the questions. If you have any questions, I can take up uh, quickly now because uh, at 9.30, I'll be quickly stopping and then uh, I'll be giving you the question set. I'll be showing you a few question set I want you to solve so that I'll come to know what's the level of audience so that I can increase my pace in the next sessions because you know that learning C cannot be done in eight hours. It's just a basic touch which I can give you to learn, start learning C. And then once you start learning C, then you can take it forward to any level. It's been around uh, more than uh, from 18, age of 18, what they mentioned I've been teaching in C. I've been learning C from past 10 plus years, but still I feel that I'm not completed learning C. So that's a very huge programming language. As in then you practice, the more experience, the more exposure you get to programming. So just a kickstart we are giving, uh, if I'm too fast, Excuse me, and if you have any questions still here, I can take up quickly for two minutes. I'll just give two minutes for the question session. You can put it in the chat section if you have any questions. If not, I'll go forward. So five more minutes are there before I can take up another concept. So I can go quickly. I'll wait for a couple of minutes. if. No questions. Okay, I have a question. I think uh, he's raising the hand, so maybe he wants to ask the question. If volunteers can give that facility, that's okay. All alphabets can be converted to binary, but all of them have ASCII value for what purpose? Okay, your question itself is having the answer. Alphabets cannot be converted to binary. That's why we have ASCII value for them, so that that integer, that ASCII value can be converted to binary. You're telling all alphabets can be uh, cannot be converted to binary. Correct? Yeah. No alphabet can be directly converted to binary. Only numbers can be converted to binary. So that's why each alphabet is having a unique number called ASCII value, which can be converted to binary. Your question itself is having the answer. Okay. Uh, one more question is, uh, so what about unsigned integer? A very interesting question. It comes to your range of integers. So when I said it is two bytes, if I take two bytes, right, what is the largest number I can store and what is the smallest number I can store in it? Because you know, both positive and negative numbers cannot be stored as it is. In real mathematics, we use minus sign for negative numbers. Correct, positive numbers, we don't use any sign, directly we write it. So if I tell two bytes, the largest number which I can store is 32,767. The smallest number which I can store is minus 32,768. What happens in unsigned integer is it does not consider the negative part. It only goes for considering one part of the integer scale. So that instead of 32,767, you can have double the size in the positive part. That's it as a difference. And different codes are used for unsigned integers. You can use U for unsigned integer. It's that ignoring the signs. It's working on positive part of the scale. That's it about unsigned integers and signed integers. Signed integer means both negative and positive part. So how do you distribute your size? Do you want negative part also? Then it is minus 32,768 to 32,767. If you only want positive part, it is 0 to 32 plus 32. 64 or something, it comes there. So that's what is about unsigned. Any other questions in the chat section? I'm getting questions, so I'm answering that. Only two questions. I'll move forward, assuming that there are no questions. Any questions, you can uh, keep it. We have four weeks. I can take up in the next week, beginning also. 
I have lost 10 minutes in that connection problem. So sorry for that. So that's why I'm trying to go fast. Okay, no questions? In the chat section, I'll uh, move forwards to the coding screen. Okay. Yeah, coming back into the coding part, I can uh, quickly go to another concept of printing the statements. What happens if I write int a equal to nine? I'm giving a static value for a. What do you mean by static value is throughout the program, the value of a remains nine, which has been given initially, which is not read from the keyboard. But if I want to read the values from the keyboard, so we have a special function which is doing that. So what's the special function? It's called as scanf percentage d what is the value which i'm doing and i'm using a special symbol called ampersand a what do you mean by ampersand is you read an integer value percentage d tells integer value store it in address of a just say if i write it stores inside a but i want to store where is the address of a so who is telling that i want to go to an address in my computer so this is a special operator which says that now we'll see whether it is doing that. So what I'll do is I'll write a printf. I'll just write value of a is percentage d. I'll be just writing. Okay. So in this code chef, usually when we run this in local ID, you will be prompted to write the, uh, give the input. But what happens in code chef online compiler, they have given a special box here. You can see custom input. So this is one integer if I want to read. So I'll just give the custom input as seven. So before running, you need to give the input in this box, which is called as custom input. Just click run. So you can see the answer. Input whatever you gave is seven. What is the answer? Output of A is seven. That is value of A is seven. Value of A is percentage D. What is that percentage D? Whatever stored in A. So this is for reading. I know these online compilers are a little bit difficult to understand, but usually when you do in a offline IDE, right, you will be prompted on the screen to enter a value. But now since it's an online compiler, it takes in this fashion. All your inputs have to be given separated by space in this and then the output can be viewed in this. So this is how it goes. And this is your output. I have a client call at 9.30, so excuse me. I'll just share my screen of questions. So try solving few of the questions. Those are a bit experienced in coding. So I'll go for sharing the questions. Just see if you could solve those questions. Volunteers can meanwhile help the students in uh, solving the questions. I'll get back to you quickly after the call. It's a weekend, oh, yeah, right? Sure, so, okay, we'll go ahead with number system, which I had to cover. Can I tell about number system in integers? Especially, we have uh, different kinds of integers. One is the basic integer types, which we usually call positive and negative numbers. We also have octal number system. We also have hexa number system which all belong to the type integers itself. So we have uh, integers, octal, and hexadecimal. So what are these integers, octal, and hexadecimal? Integers, you have digits from 0 to 9. And octal, you only have digits from 0 to 7. And hexadecimal, you have digits 0 to 9 used and for 10, we use A, for 11, we use B, for 12, C, for 13, D, for 14, E, and for 15, we use F. That's your uh, octal number, hexadecimal number system. So these are the different number systems what we have. And then these are the different kinds what we see in our computer systems also. We have integers which is digit zero to nine, octal numbers zero to seven and hexadecimal. What do you mean by zero to seven is, we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. After seven in octal, we don't have eight. We have one zero. 
one zero means eight. So how does a computer identify that? It's very important when we go for security and then networking and all. We use in hexadecimal. We only use in hexadecimal, so we can call it as hexadecimal or we short call it as hexa. So what happens is integer. I'll write a equal to nine. What happens? My computer knows that okay, a is of type integer and it should be given four bytes and the value is nine. Now the question is. Whether nine is an integer which is with the digit set zero to nine, or it should be considered as an octal number system, or it should be considered as an hexa number system. Okay, if I am feeding my computer with an octal number system, I should be writing a equal to zero one zero. So if I write a zero in front of one zero, it takes it as an octal number. And what is the meaning of this is now? Okay, however, I cannot use the same name for two different values, so I'll be using B. So this meaning is actually I'm feeding eight because in octal it is one zero. In octal your eight is one zero. Fine. So I have to make my computer understand. Look here, I'm not using the number system of integers that is zero to nine. I'm using an octal number system. So how do I tell my computer before ten? I'm using zero. If I don't use this zero, my computer takes it as a normal integer ten. It doesn't take it as an octal number. So I need to be telling him what zero. And if it's an hexadecimal number, for example, ten in hexadecimal, if I have to give, I should be giving C equal to zero x. Now my computer identifies O oh, A. It means it's not a character alphabet A. It is a hexadecimal whose meaning is Ten. How do I verify it? So what I'll do is I'll just go for printf percentage d. This is how I actually print the integers, right? So I'll just give a. I'll write one more printf. See the difference here. Percentage d itself I'll give, and I'll give b, and I'll write printf percentage. B and I'll write C to so just get the outputs in different lines. In between, uh, let me put the control character backslash here. That's just a new line to come in between, so that my output comes in different lines. Okay. So now we'll run this output. If you see here, I'm telling A it should be an integer type to be printed. B is also an integer type to be printed. C is also an integer type to be printed. So what is there in A? Nine. What is there in B? Zero one zero. That means eight. What is there in C? Zero x a. That means ten. So when I run this code, you can see nine eight ten. What is nine? It is integer. Directly it printed nine. What is eight? It was your zero one zero. As I said, eight. In octal, it is one zero. And how did I computer come to know it is octal because I gave zero. If I remove this zero, and if I run this program, it prints directly ten only. See here, second line is ten. How do I tell my computer it is octal? I need to give him a starting leading zero. Okay. Now the question is, I want to print in their octal number only. So what I should do is I should not print D here. There is a separate code for that. We write it in O. Percentage O says that it is an octal number. So if I write percentage O and B, and if I run, you can see here it is printing one zero. What is one zero? Octal. But while printing also it should print a leading zero. So what I should do is there is a special code used which we call it as hash. See, this hash is actually a flag. We call this hash as a flag. What is that flag telling? Is that hash flag will tell my compiler that when you're printing an octal number, always print by putting a zero in front of it, so that while looking also I'll come to know. Okay, it is an octal number. Now it is no difference. See, if you see hexadecimal also it is giving ten, octal also it's giving ten. How do you know it is an octal number? To, while giving it to computer, we need to give him with a leading zero. That means while he is giving to us, he should also give us with a leading zero. So to tell that, we are using this special flag called hash. So now if I run this, 
you can see here my 10 has come with zero front in the same way if i want to print c it is printing in integer if i want to print it in hexadecimal i have to write zero x So zero x. What is the meaning of zero x? It is a hexadecimal format. So zero x, if I write, it prints this C in hexadecimal format. You can see here a. It's an hexadecimal value. You can also print in some compilers just with x. You need not give a placeholder for it. It prints it with the a. You can see here hexadecimal ten is nothing but a. So the A what we have given. And if you give capital X, it prints that in capital A. So that's how it goes in here. So you can see here. But it is printing A. It feels like it's an alphabet. Someone should tell me that it is an hexadecimal. So I'll tell my computer, don't print just an hexadecimal number. Whenever you're printing an hexadecimal number, give its prefix value also that means zero x also you need to be printing so now if i run it with hash you can see here it is printing zero x a i never told you print zero x a it is printing zero x a and who is telling that the flag hash so these are certain codes which are available in c programming language which can make your computer give you output in whatever format you want so those particular extra codes what we refer we usually call it as what flags fine okay another very important concept of flags is consider i have another variable called integer p equal to minus 9 okay fair enough minus 9 is there how does my minus 9 get printed so let me copy this So I'll write percentage D and D. So my value D has to get printed. Fine. What is the value of D minus nine? So how it prints minus nine? So we'll just see here. See here, minus nine has printed as it is. But plus nine, you can see it has printed only nine. Because we know that in real life, if we don't give the sign minus, it is understood that it is a positive number. But I want to print minus now positive numbers with a leading plus symbol. So how do we do it? So what I have to do is I need to use a flag called minus hyphen. Now hyphen is not a symbol for minus hyphen is a flag. Flag hyphen. We call it as justification. You heard about justification in word pad, left justifying, right justifying. In the same way here, minus means a justification with sign. Fine. Okay. So now minus flag acts for justification. So what I use for signing, fine. So another flag, what I used for signing is, excuse me with my words, minus is a justification flag, plus is a sign flag. What do you mean by sign flag? Right. Plus B. Okay. You think here, I've my D is minus nine, but I've used plus symbol. So most of you may feel that it should be printing plus nine. No, what is meaning of plus is not putting plus in front of nine. The meaning of plus is includes its sign. So if I run this, it puts minus nine itself. See, though I have used plus D, it prints minus nine itself. Now we'll see a positive number. Fine. Let me go for printing A. I'll change its value to 19. It's a positive number. So instead of printing D, let me go for giving A. So I've given percentage plus D A. If I don't give this plus, we'll see without plus what happens. I'll run this. You can see 19 getting printed here. There is no plus 19 written. Just 19 is getting printed. If I write that symbol plus here, and then if I run the program, you can see the value plus 19 getting printed. This is how it works. Fine. So there are three different kinds of flags, which I told one is a hash flag, which is used for displaying the octal and hexadecimal representatives when it is printing in the screen. 
a plus flag which is actually a sign flag which does not mean that it prints everything with a positive number no if it's a negative number it the plus will be replaced with minus automatically so plus is not a positive indication plus is a flag here which is called as a sign flag what do you mean by minus justification so we'll see that also in an example so to show that example let me clear off all these uh, inputs see the printf here printf i'll write percentage b a look here very carefully because it's a minute changes what is happening in your screen so now when i run this program very simple printing the value of a in the screen so it prints 9 i can also reserve some space for my 9 i can tell that in my screen reserve seven boxes for 9 so what i'm telling this is i'm giving a size so what happens if i give 7d and run this see here where is your 9 getting printed it has reserved seven places if you see it is not shown here because everything is coming blank but before this 9 there are six blank spaces why six blank places because you said that you want to reserve how many rooms for printing 9 seven rooms you want to reserve for printing 9 so you can see here and the 9 gets printed in the last box if it's 19 and if i run so out of seven boxes it will take two boxes for printing 19 and remaining five block boxes will be empty in front of it so what i am telling my computer is reserve seven boxes for printing 19 and print my 19 towards the right side of your reserved space okay how do i know it has left five blank spaces in front of it what i'll do is i'll write zero what do i mean by zero is it's called padding flag what do i mean by padding flag all the unused places in front should be put with the zero so it is 19 which takes two places i have reserved seven places that means five more places should be put with zero so let me run this you can see here my 19 gets printed but how many places are with zero five why five zeros because totally i reserved seven places in which i only consume two places why because it's a two digit number and remaining five places i am telling it to fill it with zero so this is also possible these kinds of coding helps you in your web interactions where you can reserve certain place for giving inputs when you do forms and all in the back end we use these kinds of codes for reserving fixed console's place for taking inputs or for displaying the input and since i wanted to pad the unused places with zero and why it is padding with zero because zero comes in front of any number its value does not change fine okay now what happens is i'm reserving seven places but i don't want to print him towards the right side i want to print him towards the left side that's where i'm using minus flag that's called justification and it is a left justification justify your line so what happens with minus 7 is when i run it reserves seven rooms but your out 19 is getting printed towards the left side see here if i remove minus it prints towards the right side by leaving five boxes after 19 before 19 now what happens is there are seven rooms but the seven rooms are after 19 there are five rooms left space how do i come to know there are seven five rooms left blank so what i'll do is after percentage d let me write one simple a a character just character a and let me run see 19 is here a is not printing after 19 a is printing after five boxes 1 2 3 4 5 5 why five boxes it is left blank okay uh, you may feel i have left a space here so that is because of that let me put it together no space in printf percentage da i have written see five places are there after 19 1 2 3 4 5 5 after that a so it is reserving seven rooms but the problem is it's not writing towards right side it is writing towards left side because of whom because of minus now what happens if i give zero 
this question was one of the question in your campus rounds what happens if i give both zero and ask him to print towards the left side most of you think that okay it is reserving seven rooms so after 19 the remaining places will be put with zero no computer is little bit smart it knows that if after 19 if it puts zero then the value of the 19 gets changed it gets higher value if zero comes after a number its value gets increased so that's why it will ignore the zero flag so we'll run this program and see though i have written zero in front it will not pad see here it has not padded it will not pad the unused places after 19 because its value gets changed the value of 19 gets changed padding only works when you don't have that minus flag that is justification flag so if i remove minus you can see here padding works see 0000 19a that's because the minus flag is not there so minus flag is actually the justification flag so how many flags we have seen here we have seen different flags now zero is padding flag minus is a justification flag plus is a sign flag and then we have also seen hash hash is a octal and num hexadecimal number representation flag so this is how you can actually go for it okay i'll quickly go to the scanf also in the same regards I'll remove this okay i'm not having any value for a i have to read a value for a so what i can do is scan f percentage d i have shown it here and then i'll read ampersand a just see that it has read that properly i'll print that value of a is percentage d a let me print it now new line so in the console input let me give it 7 or uh, let me give a big number 1 2 3 and let me run so the input is 1 2 3 so it tells value of a is 1 2 3 the meaning of this is whatever i am reading from the input it is put to a so i have to check whether it is put to a that's why i am writing a printf value of percentage d is a so it's getting printed now see a oh, size what i am giving in the scanf i'll tell 2d i'll tell percentage 2d now when i run the program i'm telling my computer whatever number of values the user gives you should consider only first two values first two digits so if i run the program i gave 1 to 3 as input but see the value of a 1 2 because i clearly told in the scanf don't read all of the digits as a input only take first two digits if i take 1d it will take only one out of 1 to 3 see one more question arises what if i gave a input as 1 and i gave here 2d input is only 1 and i gave here 2d so let me run that no effect it gives one why because what is the meaning of 2d is maximum you take two digits less than that you can take any number clear but maximum i should take in only two digits so that's the meaning of this particular size in scanf so i don't want to complicate much by telling flags in scanf and all i'll keep it to a basic level because it's very important in one of the interview rounds he said that i need to read only first two characters one of the question what he said was i need to read only first two digits or first two sequences how do i do it so you can give a size to your scanner that's one of the important things which you have to be knowing any questions still here i can take quickly if you have any questions okay you i can see some questions it is already answered can we use see in and see out instead of scanf and printf in c++ you can use c constructs if your ide is a c++ construct you can use c in that but in c c++ constructs is not working c++ is actually a collection of c and extra things but c does not support see in and see out in only its ide you need to be using dot cpp for that someone has already answered it that c in c out is for c++ but when you're using it if it's if your ide is a gcc or a c 
CP compiler which you are using, then you can use it, no problem. If it understands. But if it's just a Turbo C basic version, you have to use printf and scanf. One more question is, uh, Sir, I've heard that C language lies between high level language and low level language. So is it true? And so is it better to start with C? Okay. As I said, C, some of them consider it as a medium level language, but as is, there is no medium level language. C is a high level language itself. So we have machine level language, we have assembly level language, and then we have high level language. C is not an assembly level language. Assembly level language is a microprocessor language which you are learning in second year of engineering. Correct? C is a high level language. So the easiest and the very basic level of programming starts with C. Because C is a structured programming language. It's not like Python or other object oriented programming languages. It's a structured programming language where it gives importance to procedures and process. Your C++ gives importance to data, classes, collections, and your Python gives importance to your free flowing way of writing the program, which does not have a structure. But all these other programming languages are easy to learn only if you're very good in C. So I am telling from my experience, C is the best way to master yourself in programming, which will help you to jump into any other programming language and master a few hours. Python will take only around 10 to 15 hours to learn if you're very good in C. So that could have answered your question. Any other questions do I have on the concepts which I've taken in printf and scanf? I can take up quickly because it's very vast concept of printf and scanf. And I know it's very limited time, so I don't want to drag the concepts into next session. Next session, I want to keep it for branching itself. So I'm trying to wind up all the concepts in today's session. So I can take one more minute. I can give you for asking questions. I'll just look into the chat section if I have any questions. Hope I'm audible and my pace is okay. I'm not going too fast. Anyone from the volunteers have to acknowledge this? Yes, I, uh, oh, fine. Like this pacing is fine. Okay, I don't know if it's for Juni who are starting C language for first time. I know it's very difficult to learn in online classes. But bear me, get in touch with me anytime. You can ping me to mail ID and I can uh, answer your queries. Those who are new to programming language. The ones who are said, in there's one more question in the chat box. Yeah, okay. What's the question? When to use printf and when putus and scanf and getus? Very interesting questions. Let me go with the coding part itself. Okay. When I tell about IO, when I tell about IO, there are two kinds formatted and unformatted. So there are two kinds of IO interactions. IO means input output. Clear? Yeah? Okay, when it comes to formatted, there are two functions which we use. One is printf, another is scanf. Printf is for output, scanf is for input. When it comes to unformatted, we use getus, putus, we use getcar, we'll write it down. Unformatted, I'm telling. So let me put the whole unformatted down. When I'm telling I'm unformatted, I have get care. I have care. I have get che echo. I have get ch. I have put ch. So like this, it goes on. So if you clearly see the name only suggests get s it works only for strings it can read only strings put s it can read on it only displays strings get character it can read only characters put character it can display only characters get ch it gets a character and the e means echo what do you mean by echo is in uh, programming terms echo means writing something to the console or showing something to the console. Whatever you have read, if you want to show that in the console, we call it as echoing. So that particular thing can be done with get chi. Get ch is again another compiler supported just to get the character. Put ch is to put the character. So unformatted just works on characters and strings. 
but formatted works on characters integers doubles float any type so usually we go for formatted input output because easily you can read any types of data for example well integer data if i have i can write a printf and go for writing percentage d i can display it like this for example if i have integer and uh, let me assume some uh, value for it seven so printf percentage d a it displays the value of a that is an integer percentage d seven but i cannot display an integer in get care or put care what i can display there is a character type for example character i have b equal to b so this particular thing i can display it using get care let me show that put care get care is for reading so put care b if you see this line i'm not telling him that it is a character i'm directly putting b because it works only on characters so if i run this see the output b don't consider this input there is no input for our program i'll run this see v is getting printed the same thing if i want to print it in printf i have to write printf percentage c should be enclosed in double quotes name of it b so you can see here i'm not using put care i'm using printf see v is getting printed but when you see printf you can clearly come to know okay it is a character type why because i have written percentage c why it takes a code because it can print any types but put care does not take any code because it works only on characters so the best way to do console is using printf and scanf why because any data type you can do it but in put care and get as putters and all you can work only on strings and characters it's not possible to go with integers floating types and all that so the best way to interact is using printf and scanf other all other options are get as put as get care put care get chc it's very easy option when you are going for strings and all sometimes it is handy if you are going for strings and all printf should write percentage yes and on this bit much big line you need to write but get as is very simple get as within parenthesis give the variable name that's it but it works only on strings these two on strings it works get as and put as these work on characters and e is very important when you go for uh, web programming kinds of thing where you echo the input hope i have answered the question any other questions to i have if not i'll uh, move forward with this one concept which i can uh, take up i hope the questions are uh, solved any volunteer any uh, any difficulties in any of the questions i hope no difficulties in any of the questions because the questions were very straightforward someone has to acknowledge me on any difficulty in any of the questions or if typo error or something is gone wrong uh, no sir the only thing is like uh, you know there are few beginners who have no much idea who doesn't have much idea about uh, operators like different operators okay fine other okay. than that uh, you know those who have some idea they could solve yeah fine because the online sessions are in such a way that we have mixed audience right yeah sir if if i go in detail on operators and all the audience who already know these concepts may feel bit bored and if i go little bit more advanced then the beginners may feel that c is still a stuff language will not learn but trust me c is very very easy language only thing is you need to spend time with it that's it so those beginners who are there right just spend time with it initially when i started with c in my pew it was very difficult because we are no we know english where we have grammars and all who will remember so everyone goes for by hearting but trust me one or two hours per day will master you in c by the end of your engineering at least two hours per day you need to be giving for coding because your future lies in coding let it be mechanical engineer civil or any engineering stream your future lies in coding so please give at least couple of hours a day for coding and best thing is with c because mechanical civil and other engineers you are using embedded c 
So best thing is you can go with C, hardware supported language C. So for only beginners, if they are feeling it very difficult, uh, SOSC can come up with the session where we have only beginners, those who have not started with learning C. So I can put up that. Uh, yeah, sir, we could do that. Yeah, we can do that. But make sure once the college reopens, right, then we can do that. Because teaching yeah, C in chalk and wood is much comfortable to understand also for beginners. So if I find time, I would love to come to college and uh, help you out in there. Or else your SOSC team is good enough to handle, I guess, the basic. Yeah, we can plan for one yeah. time. Yeah, we'll do it. For now, I'll go it in this space itself. I'll not go a little bit down to operators and all. Or do we want us to? Do we want? Do you want me to go to operator levels and then come? How do you think? I want inputs from the audience also. What do you think? Do you want to tell about operators in detail and come up, or do you want me to go it in a high level, like how I'm going? Because I just have two hours for basics, and if I share my slide, this is what I have to cover. And almost everything I've covered, keywords, identifier, constants, operators, like I have told binary operators, if other operators, if you want me to go in detail, I can go. If you have time, I can spare on that. Quick, I want one minute, I'll give you for giving me the inputs on. Do you want me to go in depth on operators? If not, I can take your questions and then we can wind up the session because I think almost the things which I've planned for covering, I've done it at a very high pace and at an overview level. These are the topics which I had to cover and uh, any doubts on any of these topics, like how to work on hexadecimal numbers, octal numbers, how to do conversions and all, you can get back to any of the SOSC team members and uh, or else you can get back to me. I have shared my details with the team volunteers. They'll help you out in reaching out to me. So organizers, what do you think? I want to go ahead with operators or let me keep it at this pace? Uh, I think this phase would be fine, I guess. Yeah. It would be better like if audience answer in the chat section. Yeah. Even I'm expecting if someone is there who wants to listen on operators, then I can take up. If not, I'll go because operator is a very basic level, right? Yeah. So those who have already learned in first year may feel it's boring. Anyone from the audience can answer. Don't feel bad to ask anything. Let us know if you want on anything. It's your right to ask the question and get the answer back. And we would love to give the answers. Don't think on time. My time was still 10 in my company and I can go on to any time after that. If you are ready. Uh, I think uh, there's no one who is into operators or ex if anyone wants and any request comes later, you just let me know. I'll take up that in the initial next week session. Yeah, yeah sure, sir. Okay, fine. Uh, so then we'll wind up. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Sure, sure. Okay. Uh, give them a platform where they can put their questions and opinions, right? So that in the next uh, week, uh, I can take up those in the beginning and then go with the concepts. Yeah, okay, fine. Uh, we, you guys can put it up in the WhatsApp group and uh, like if you have any queries and I will be sharing a feedback form over there also. If you have any queries, you can put it up in there as well. So that's fine. Yeah, that should be yeah. working in. And a uh, couple of times there was an inconvenience from my side. Please excuse me. I had to take a few calls and then uh, regarding that VPN. Hope it doesn't come in our next sessions. Thanks, <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, fine. Thank you, and then uh, see you in the uh, next week. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Have a nice weekend. Bye. Hey guys, uh, we have the three more sessions coming up next week, so I expect you all to be in those sessions. Uh, I hope you all had a very fun session today. Uh, keep practicing. And then if you're going to be very, very active in the group, you're, you might be chosen as an executive member and you'll be getting swags and stuff and goodies also. 
so keep practicing and uh, stay in touch do pingers if you have a doubt or if you get stuck so thank you guys see you next week